Hello everybody and welcome back. Today I'm working on the third iteration of my Skull King painting. These first two hold such a special place in my heart. They both had very pivotal roles in me figuring out how I wanted to paint and what I wanted to be as an artist. And I I loved the character, so I'm very excited to be revisiting this piece so that I can see where I'm at now compared to these past two pieces. So the first version of Skull King that I ever did was way back in 2015, and that was when I was first learning how to use watercolors seriously. And it was, I think, one of the very first, if not the first assignments that I had in my watercolor class. And that's why it's all broken up into these different cells because the assignment was to to break up a painting into a bunch of little pieces like this so that we can do lots of flat washes to learn how watercolors work so that's where a lot of the design elements came from so that original piece that's where i was beginning to learn watercolors so i feel really fondly looking at that piece and i loved the character he is very stylized. I used to work much more, much more stylized with my characters at that time. So when it came time to revisit him in 2017 for my second version, I I knew that that was one of the things that I wanted to adapt and bring up to where I was working at at that point, which is a little bit more realistic. And there are other elements too that I was looking at. What can I bring over? What can I update? And this time around, the biggest thing that I want to compare and look at is simply how much progress have I made with watercolors and the way that I handle my, my mediums that I'm using to create these pieces. So every time I do a repaint, I do like to look at the last piece, obviously, because I'm repainting it. I need to look at it. I need to see what's going on with it. But I also like to take stock in what what was the magic of that first piece? What makes me want to revisit that idea? Where were those special moments that I can bring into the next generation of that piece? And it also gives me a chance to look at what are things that maybe didn't go perfectly while I was painting it or issues that I've noticed as time has gone on. And I can take note of all those things so it can give me a chance, a second chance at fixing some of those things that that I may not have been happy with or over time became less happy with. So looking back at these two, I know that the biggest thing that I want to take away from it is the character, of course. I, I love the Skull King character. I feel really attached to him. So I knew that he was going to, of course, be pivotal in working on this new version. But there's also a few other things as well. I love the skull motif in the background and the general colors that I've used. So those are things I knew would stick true in this next version that I would make sure that I kept and followed over with. I also decided to keep, it's almost the exact same composition as the other two since the second one had the same composition. I decided that I'd go ahead and keep with that trend and just do a shot for shot, make it as close in that regard as the other ones. So that way I could have a really direct comparison to see where I'm at. Oh, and a quick notice, this piece is available at my shop. The original has actually already sold, but I do have prints of Skull King Echo available at my shop. There's a link down in the description and I've got him in an eight by 10 and an 11 by 14 inch size. So there's a link down in the description that again, will take you over to my shop if you'd like to get a print of your own. So like I mentioned, the biggest thing that I wanted to focus on in this new repaint was simply how far have I come with my watercolors and new mediums that I use with it? And looking back at my second piece, which I called Skulking Reprise, I I am noticing, of course, <laughs> that one of the biggest differences is that when I was working on that one, I used micron pens entirely for all of the line work. And I I love line art. I love looking at it in artwork. I love creating it. It's one of my absolute favorite steps in a painting. But at that time, I was, again, using pens, microns to create the line work, and it was all very static. It was just with black, and there was no adapting it as I worked on the piece. Once it was there, it was there, and it was basically just like I was painting in a watercolor page. So it felt like once I started, it was just very mechanical. I was finishing it from start to end. And for a little while... That was fine. That kind of 
line art process, but it didn't take very long before I started wanting more out of my line art application. I wanted something that could be more dynamic, that could grow with the piece as I worked on the piece. And I wanted something that could change colors as I was adapting it to the object that it was defining. There was just so much lacking with creating line work that original way. And during these five years, I have been searching for the perfect way to do line work. And I have talked about this plenty, but the, the gem, the thing that ended up being the perfect medium for me was actually acrylic gouache. So I use that for all of my line work now. That has been an absolute game changer. I adore using it with my watercolors. It just completely elevates the process so that working on the painting feels so enjoyable from start to finish, which is not something that I have always felt with my watercolors. So that was a big, a big shift, something that really changed the way that I look and build my watercolor paintings. It just, it added so much more possible dimension to my pieces. So if you're wondering why acrylic gouache, why that is the perfect medium, it is actually an acrylic paint. It's, it's very different from an artist gouache or a more traditional gouache that is reactivated with water and it can relift really as you layer on top of it. Acrylic gouache is acrylic. It's basically just like a matte acrylic paint. And because it's matte, it blends perfectly with the finish of watercolor. So it doesn't have a shine or anything. It just looks like it completely belongs with that painting in that ecosystem. So for that, it checks the box. It also gets thinned down with water. So it's just the same workflow and process as my watercolors. And it is fairly waterproof once it's down. That way I can do my line work and come back and do more washes on top of it. It preserves that line work. It doesn't bleed. It's the perfect option. I just use a brush with my acrylic wash and it's, it's golden. It allows me to adapt the color again like I mentioned, so that I can make it perfectly suited to what I'm defining. I I love all of the options that it brings. So because I unlocked that, it has allowed my pieces to really step forward and in, in a much better direction so that I can really think through how can I make a piece more dynamic or more 3D or make the environment interact with the character more. There's just so many possibilities that before I had I didn't have the access to do it that way. And it goes far beyond just the line work too, just being able to work in both directions. So with traditionally, when you're working with watercolors, it's generally you work light to dark. You can't really add lights back in. Sometimes you can add like little pops of highlights if you use a little gel pen. But once you incorporate an opaque medium like this acrylic gouache, the the options are limitless. I can go both light and dark, and that has just freed me up so much so that when I'm working on a piece, I feel like I can see where it goes. And it feels like a an adventure that I'm on with the piece, with the mediums. It It's just such a joy to work with these. I love them so much. But, but yeah, it allows me to add back in highlights, but also highlights that are colored, not just white, like some of the options that I used way back when, like just a normal uh, gel pen or a different type of gouache. I have used those in the past just to pop in some white highlights, but having a full range of the acrylic gouache, it allows me to to add in highlights that are all sorts of colors so that it can have reflected light or rim lighting or just new techniques, new new elements that I can incorporate, like the the cuts on his skin, that's all gouache. And the, that gouache is super, super pigmented. It's so saturated and bright in real life. I, I love that pink. And that's something that I just cannot achieve with watercolors. The watercolors are less saturated by nature. They're pretty much all just kind of a step down. So if I want something that really pops with a lot of saturation, I, I have that access now. And skill wise, I would say that probably the thing that I've come the farthest along with is painting skin. I've been really trying to focus in on that the last couple of years. So with that second skulking, it was almost entirely the paper white that was left there. And I did like the effect. I liked that it made him feel really gaunt and dead-like, which I 
felt really fit with his character and what I wanted him to feel like. But it's not how I want to paint it anymore. I want to be able to to have much more much more dynamic skin tones and shadows within the skin and undertones. So I've been really trying to focus on finding really good reference when I'm working on skin so that I can have more lifelike shadows that have much more depth to them. And I've been trying to be a lot more finessed with, again, the undertones in skin. So like where blush is on the face and the noses and tips of the ears where there's just a little bit extra rosiness, that kind of element I've been really trying to make feel more lifelike, a little softer. And that has been an exciting thing to compare the two pieces and to see how far I have come. So with the current Skull King that I'm working on, I wanted him to still have that unearthly paleness and gauntness. But instead of being just like this bone paper white, I went with a purple skin tone and that that achieves that, that ghostliness. But it also allows me to push and pull with the values. He has more life to him. He doesn't look nearly as as empty as that first one. So, so that was a step in the right direction. It's something that I've learned with a lot of trial and error of trying to figure out how to paint skin in a way that I'm much happier with. But probably the most foundational thing that I can see my improvement in is just flat washes. The more you do something, the better you get at it, the easier it becomes. And flat washes with watercolors is a prime example for that. I have painted probably thousands and thousands of washes since since I painted the second piece and since I painted that first one. So I'm able to control it a lot better. I can get really smooth flat washes and gradients a lot easier than I used to. It's just a reminder of hope that the more you practice something, the more you can master that skill. And there's going to be a point where that tricky thing that you're struggling with, if you just keep working at it, you will get to a point where it gets easier and easier and more natural. And don't forget, I do have prints available of Skull King Echo available at my shop. There's a link down in the description and he's available in an eight by 10 and 11 by 14 inch sized print. And I just, I love how he turned out. I'm really happy with this piece. It's very inspiring for me to, to start working on maybe some new characters that I can revisit and enjoy and experiment with. And I'm, I'm actually pretty sure that this will be the last repaint of this particular piece. I am so excited about the idea of actually revisiting this character and putting him in new compositions, new environments. So he won't be the last that we see of him, but it will be the last of this composition and this pose. So we're moving on to bigger and better things, but that is it for today. So thank you so much for watching and a huge thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon. You guys are absolutely incredible. I can't thank you enough for the support that you show me there so that I can keep making artwork. So thank you for all of that. But that's it. So I'll see you guys next time.